Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, Thursday's class of animation from the Chuck Jones Center for Creativity. Um, we're going to slowly let others join in, uh, but um, let me take advantage of this time to say that we're uh, we're going to be studying what's called stop motion this uh, this week, this entire week, and uh, that's what I'll be concentrating on today. And um, just wanted to remind you guys, which I know you've heard many times, feel free to, uh, first of all, pass on uh, the Chuck Jones um, Center for Creativity and our series, our weekly, daily series uh, to your friends. See if they want to join, have a good time, learn a little something new when they go out to see their animated pieces in both film and television. They'll know a little bit more about it. And I guarantee you they'll appreciate it a lot more um, because animation is 100% unique. Uh, also want to remind you too that, you know, we're a free service and uh, any uh, contributions you can give to the center is much appreciated. Um, Scott is in the process of putting up the donation link. Uh, no donation is too small. So feel free to, uh, Pass it on if you've got it. Um, okay, with that, um, today myself and Mike Funt and Scott Ryder are all joining you today to uh, walk you through a little bit of stop motion, an interesting uh, concept in animation where rather than drawing uh, characters, you're able to basically use them as a puppet or some sort of a physical three-dimensional object. And you're able to animate that one frame at a time. Ultimately, those frames are put together and create motion. Um, but that is the reason it's called stop motion. The reason why is because we're actually stopping our usual motion at each interval and then recording it by shooting it onto the camera and the association between the camera and the object being animated is really, really critical in uh, stop motion animation. In stop motion, you have to make sure that you lock off the camera. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, but to bring you up to speed in what we're talking about stop motion, uh, I'm going to show several videos here. Some of them will be uh, some concepts that are relevant to previous um, uh, week's uh, assignments. And most of it will be dedicated to the concept of stop motion. So, uh, Cindy, I've got one for you dealing with a fly uh, cycle. And um, then also I've got one in the beginning that deals with literally our flip book concept. If you remember the, the concept of the flip book, we can go all the way back to uh, the very first week and session, uh, but it's nicely done. So Scott, with that, why don't we roll the first video? So as you can see, guys, this is basically a, a sketchbook and the animator has utilized each individual page of the sketchbook to create the rabbit in its different part of motion. And then he's just simply flipping the page, taking a shot, flipping the page, taking a shot. It's a form of stop motion, but they're actually utilizing some drawn images there. So they put together a, uh, a hop and run cycle for this rabbit. And they're simply flipping between the pages over and over and over again to create the cycle. So let's take a look at the next one, Scott. Okay, Cindy, I want you to pay attention to this. This is a very slow motion of an eagle coming down to the water and grabbing a fish. And notice right here that return to full motion. Notice how far down the wings go and notice the head bob too. Uh, the head bobs in the opposite direction of the force of the wings. So uh, let's let that play again, Scott. So Cindy, take a look at this and notice, especially right after he gets the fish, right here. 
Look at how far those wings go down and up. It's carrying a lot of weight. So we always want to exaggerate that motion that helps communicate it better. Okay, Scott, uh, we can move on to this next video. Okay, all of stop motion animation really has its, um, its beginnings in puppetry. So look at this interesting puppet, puppeteer here. He's actually got a character that's painting. That's incredibly difficult uh, puppeteering to do. But he's actually letting his puppet kind of draw and then watch the puppet will kind of look over at the audience, kind of give him a little look and then he's gonna mix his colors a little bit more and then he's gonna go back into painting. Um, but in essence, puppetry is in fact, stop motion animation. It's just, you're playing it along quickly. And oftentimes we use puppetry as our kind of, our, our base model when dealing with stop motion animation. It's a really, really interesting technique. And this, this puppeteer is just amazing. I, I, I can't believe it. Really nice work there. Okay, Scott, we can move on. Okay, here's an example of something that we're gonna kind of work on somewhat today. But as you can imagine, these are just simple cube forms that are basically put into an animation cycle here where the objects morph and compress and then animate, all of this done in stop motion. So every single one of those frames was shot the, the objects were gently and carefully repositioned, and then a shot on the camera was taken. One thing that you'll notice here that's important is you can see the lighting in this situation is great. They've got what's called a key light, which is down at the bottom of the frame, which is causing the shadows to cast upward. And then they've got a fill light just to soften that shadow a little bit. I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute, but lighting, and staging in, uh, in stop motion animation is critical. Really, really critical. Okay, let's move on to the next one, Scott. Here's something really interesting. This is, uh, this is called cutaway claymation here. So this animator has actually developed some characters and put it into a huge loaf of bread of clay. And then he shoots and steals away parts of that clay. So let's look at the uh, setup again. See how he's got this large loaf of, he's actually cutting away at each of those elements. You can see the pile of junk on the left. And as he cuts away, he's animated the characters in a, in, an, in a way where the board keeps coming towards us and the character is actually animated by how he laid the K, or sorry, the clay into the animation. Let's see the end result. And each one of those frames prior, prior to cutaway is shot. So he takes a shot, cuts a little bit away, shoots it, cuts a little bit away. The camera, as you can see, is completely locked off, but you can see, you can see the board that the clay is on moving towards the camera. So the camera starts, way, starts locked off. The object is actually quite close to the camera. And then he just cuts away at it. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Here's a scene of, of actual puppetry and what we call a, um, an armature at work here. So the characters actually are connected to a stand and that stand allows you to watch and move the characters from their previous frame. So these animators are actually moving these characters and creating all this motion with a small puppet and what's called an armature. So the, the armature has joints in it and the joints can be bent slowly along. And then when it goes into full motion, they look quite good. So uh, let's take a look at what this animation looks like when it's finally completed.
<laughs> okay, let's, Scott, let's quickly go back and look at the, uh, the animators piece. So look at how much work is involved here. It's a lot of going back and forth, quickly looking at your, at your uh, motion, most likely in video, so they can quickly replay this, take a look, and then reshoot what they have to. It's all shot against black because they're gonna ultimately key out the background and put it in their own background. All right, Scott, let's take a look at the final animation again. Very cool, awesome. And let's move on to the next one. Okay, take a look here. You've got what's called a split screen. So you've got the animator working on the top and the scene on the bottom. So the scene is being shot against a green screen so that they can key in the background, namely the saloon. And you can see how that animator is working feverishly to create all this motion. And if you look at the animator, you'll notice something very interesting. His shirt is changing. That means he's taking days to do this. He's coming back with a different, he's coming back with a different shirt each day. And you can see there are probably about six different shirts on that animator. So it's taking him about six days to animate approximately five seconds of animation. So needless to say, stop motion animation is an incredibly timely process. It takes a long time to do. All right, let's move on to the last one. This is what we're going to be animating today. This is an inchworm. It's an inchworm animation. It's very, very unique in animation. And it's one of the tougher animations to do only because it's not something that is easily repeatable. It has to move the background at a certain time because the inchworm is actually only moving forward in half of its motion. The rest of the motion, the back of the inchworm is being dragged forward and then he lifts his heads up and pushes his forward body forward. Okay. So what we're gonna work on is uh, that particular animation. We're gonna work on how do we animate an inchworm using simple home objects. So with that, I'm gonna to go to my down shooter here. And I want you to look at something here. I put together a storyboard of what our animation is gonna be. Sorry, it's a little shaky because I'm hand holding it. But what we've got are the red balls. In the left frame, that's indicating the main body components of our caterpillar. The caterpillar is going to move up. You can see his bottom is dragged towards his head. And then he's going to accelerate forward by leaning on his back legs and pushing his front body forward. Up at the top, you can see I've put together a um, a little timeline. So I've got time working across the horizontal axis and I've got the elements that make up this animation across the top, sorry, the vertical uh, axes. So you can see that the caterpillar is gonna be setting up, is gonna be setting up a cycle. He's gonna be going up, down, up, down. The background is only going to move during the down part of that cycle. Only during the down part will the background move because during the up part, the caterpillar is actually not moving, but rather his back is coming up to meet his front. Okay? So that's really important. Always a good idea, guys, to, to um, do a storyboard. It's really a, the best way to explain your motion to an animator 
and also to confirm your timing with the, uh, with the two axis structure across the top, okay? All right. With that, I'm gonna move the storyboard right up here. And as I've usually told you, always a good idea when animating to put the director's storyboard right in front of you. The director wants you to be on point and wants to make sure that you're spot on in animating their keyframes or their blocking. It's called the blocking of their, uh, their motion. Okay, with that, I'm going to have our fantastic personal animator and actor, Mike. Mike's gonna act out some of the motion that we're doing today. It's always a good idea to act out your own motion prior to getting started with your animation. Actually feel, feel the motion. Actually feel what, most, what muscles are moving, what part of my body is moving in order to create this motion. So with Mike, with that, Mike, go ahead and, and, and give a little demonstration here. All right, so what we're doing today is uh, this inchworm movement. And so just as Boogie said, when we start, the inchworm is flat like this. And then when the inchworm begins to move, he actually isn't traveling through space at all. So the first thing that the inchworm has to do is to bring its backside up like this. So it's kind of an upside down U shape. And then it's only moving forward when it throws its front of its body out in front of itself. So it goes boom. And then it brings the back up again. And notice that my hands aren't moving, they're staying in place. And then boom. So it moves into this upside down U shape. And then the front part gets thrown out and it flattens out again. And then it pulls the rear section into that upside down U shape and then out again. So one more time, we start flat. We bring the feet in to that upside down U shape and then throw the front part out flat, bring the feet in, throw the front part out. Like so. Excellent. And Mike, let's, let's also show the kids or, or sorry, the students in general, Cindy, you're not a kid. I know. Um, let's show utilizing some strength. Sure. So just to give you an even clearer idea of it, we use my shirt as a background. So we have between my two fingers, let's imagine that part of the string, that's our inchworm, starts out flat. And this is the backside. So it's gonna bring that backside. And again, it's gonna make that U shape like that. And then the front side over here, gets thrown forward and that's when it moves. So again, the back side goes and this side stays still and then it moves forward when the front moves out. Back side gives us the upside down U, this side stays still and then it moves it out. One more time, back side in gives us the upside down U, front side gives us the movement this side stays still, this side moves in, and then this side gives us the movement, like that. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Mike, very, very helpful. And guys, I would always encourage you to act out your motion. Uh, again, it's really, really important. Basically, animating is acting. That's what we're doing. We're actually acting with exaggeration. Um, and so all the more important to always follow through with acting out your animation. Okay, with that, I'm going to, uh, Scott, if you don't mind, go ahead and switch over to my other camera. 
I'm going to take you guys for a little tour of my, uh, of my home here because I'm going to introduce something that's important to our animation today. So this right here, can you still hear me? Yes, a little quiet, but we can still hear you. Okay, Scott, if you can up the audio, I'm kind of away, but let me continue to talk. This is something I built last night. And it is basically what I'm going to utilize for today's class on stop motion animation. Now this object is basically a stage. It's a stage. It's something very similar to shooting live action where you're going to need a stage where your camera stays locked off and your lighting is set up. So in this case, what I built was a little structure, a little rig here that basically shows the area I'm going to animate is open on the bottom. And then I have to the left, I have what's called a key light. That's the light that's going to predominantly light my, my subject area. And that light is the key light. That's the one that's going to be dropping the majority of shadows. The other light in the lower right is what we call the fill light. The fill light is typically dimmer and it's diffused. I'll quickly show you this. So it's diffused with a very soft piece of, of paper here that allows the light to not create hard shadows. Rather, it creates soft shadows and fills in the light, the dark areas, from the key light which is over on the left. So I've got the key light on the left, and I've got the fill light on the right. Both of them are roughly at 45 degrees on my subject area, which is down here where my hand is. That's where the animation is gonna be taking place. Now, the other thing that's really important to understand in stop motion is you, um, you have to keep your camera, what we call locked off. That means that the camera has to be on something like a tripod or something very secure so that the camera doesn't move. If the camera moves when you're animating, your animation will not work. So what I've done is I've created a little space here for my camera, for my cell phone to lock. I'm gonna quickly put it in. So let me walk back. Here's the overall set, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place my camera right into the area that's gonna be shot. That way during all this motion down here, my camera will never move. Okay? The other thing that I have in here, but it's not necessary, is sometimes you've got to get down into your work. Like, let's say you have an actual character in there, a three-dimensional character. I have it so that you can actually flip up the camera to get in there and work on your armature. And then, since it's hinged, it always falls back into the same place. See that? Okay, with that, I'm going to move this over to my desk so that we can do our animation today. So bear with me while I grab this contraption. And I walk it right on over to my desk here. And I put it down right onto the area that I'm going to animate. Hey, Boogie, I have a question. Sure. So this contraption that you have made, this, this rig here, is that something that the blueprints of which would be available online somewhere? Or, or if someone, if one of the students wanted to build one of these themselves, how would they know how to, how to form that? Okay. Uh, well, I can tell you that I just dreamed this up last night and quickly put, built it um, just here in my home. Um, so it is reasonably easy to build, but I did have, you know, I had some, some power tools to do it. Um, I'm sure 
if you were to look online for something called a photographic, a tabletop photographic stand with two lights, a key light and a fill light, that you would find something very similar to this. It would be a tabletop construction pre-made that you can buy somewhere. I just went ahead and built this just simply because I knew exactly what I needed and I felt confident that I could build it very quickly. So there's an example of me starting to get set up there. You can see that I've got my animation area down below underneath. I've got my camera stand above and I've got my two lights on either side, my key light on the left and my fill, fill light on the right. Okay. So with that, I'm going to actually put my camera right now into the stand. And as you can see, now the camera is completely still because it's locked off now. Now for our animation today, I wanted to use household objects. So what I put together was a series of nuts, nuts and bolts. These are the nuts and I strung them together with wire. So I've got wire strung between each of the joints. So as you can see, this is gonna basically demonstrate and it's got some mobility to it. See that? Along with this, I've got a background. And my background is basically the branch of a tree. And that background is gonna be moving. Okay, let me get, let me get registered again here. That background is gonna be moving this way. As the inchworm goes up and down and his motion reflects the path across that branch. Okay? So I've indicated up here at the top of my background with a mark. That mark is going to allow me to move the background at very specific increments against a ruler, which I have also mounted up here. So you can see the ruler there. And then here's my background. And I'm going to be moving the background one half inch per frame when needed. And the way that I can know how to move half an inch is I've marked it on my background and I've got a ruler across the top. Okay, so I'm gonna move my background all the way up to the start frame against my ruler. Then I'm gonna throw my foreground down. Then I'm gonna turn on my lights, okay? So I'm gonna turn on my key light. right here, and I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna now turn on my fill light. And there's my fill light. So to show you roughly what this lighting setup looks like, I'm gonna pull my camera back here, and now you can see the setup with the lights on. So I've got my key light on the left, my fill light on the right, and I've got my animation area below. Okay. Now, I'm gonna grab my object, in this case, my handy little nuts here. I'm gonna put them along the top of the branch. There. Okay. Now I wanna show you real quickly what happens when we knock off one of the lights. Here's an example of knocking off the key light. See how the shadows are actually falling in the opposite direction? They're falling to the left now. 
Now watch when I bring the key light back in, and now I reduce the fill light. All of a sudden, the contrast becomes too high. There, I need to fill in some of those shadows. So the way I do it is I bring in a fill light, and the fill fills in the shadows a little bit. Okay, that's why we have an importance of key light and fill light. Okay, what we're going to set up today is we're going to have Scott. Scott's going to basically be my cameraman. And when I ask Scott to take a picture, I'm going to have him make one frame. He's going to record one frame of the animation. Okay? So what I've done already is I have my background in the back. I have my foreground object here all connected together with wire. And then I've actually set up some very small marks as to where I want this animation to happen. Okay? Over the duration of this, uh, this cycle. Okay? So, as we pointed out with the motion, the tail, the tail of the piece actually collapses towards the head with the head staying in place. Okay? So the first thing I'm gonna ask Scott to do is do what's called a hold. A hold is where it's just, the motion is exactly, it's still, no motion is happening during this. And it's always a good idea when you animate a motion test that you provide yourself with a hold at the beginning. It allows you as a viewer to get kind of ready for the animation. Rather than the animation starting on frame one, you hold the first frame for approximately 10 frames, okay? So in this case, I'm going to ask Scott, Scott, can you record one frame now, another frame now, another frame now, the fourth frame now, the fifth frame now, the sixth frame, the seventh frame, the eighth frame, the ninth frame, and the tenth frame. That's called a hold in animation. Now I'm going to start actually animating my character. So what I'm going to do, since his head is not moving, I'm going to put my finger on the head, and I'm going to push up the center the center nut, like so, okay? Now I'm gonna have Scott record that frame. Scott, record that frame. Got it. Now I'm gonna keep the head in the same place. I'm going to move it up to the second notch. Scott, record that frame. Okay. And now I'm moving up to the third notch. As you can see each time, the bottom, the back is being pulled in while the head stays in the same place. I might want to do some slight nuances here. Record that frame. Got it. Moving up to the next frame. Each time, the back of the animation is getting closer to the front of the character. Record that frame. Pushing up again. Record that frame. Okay. And finally up to the last frame, in other words, the highest point in its U shape. Here we go. Record that frame. Good. Now, this is very important. This is the maximum height that the U will go up. We record this frame twice. And the reason we record this frame twice is because it's where the motion is reversing. So our motion came up. And in animation, 
when emotion goes up and changes direction down, you hold at the top and then come down. So I'm going to ask Scott to take another picture of this. Got it. Good. Now we're going to have the head move out. Okay. But what I'm really going to be doing, because I want the character to stay in the middle of the camera, is I'm going to be moving the character back. I'm going to be moving the back backwards, but I'm going to be moving the background back with it. Okay, so watch this. I'm going to, first of all, lift up his head a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to ask Scott to record that. Got it. Okay, now I'm going to move the tail back slightly, and I'm going to move the background by one half inch. Okay, and I'm going to ask Scott to record that. Got it. Then I'm going to move the character back one more. So I'm going to lift his head a little bit higher. And I'm going to pull his tail back a little bit. All the while moving the background also. Take a shot of that. Okay. Now I'm going to keep the head up and off, and I'm going to push the tail back a little bit. And I'm going to move the background back by one half inch. Okay. I'm going to hold the head here, and pull it back a little bit. like so, and I'm gonna move the background, advance by one half, one half of an inch. Got it. Let's take a shot of that. Got it. Okay, then I'm gonna hold the head in place again. I'm gonna pull it straight, and he's gonna be at this point, his head is gonna be starting to come back down again. So I'm gonna bring its head down a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to advance the background by one half inch. Take a shot of that. Got it. And then the last frame is going to be right back to my start frame. Only I will advance the background. I'll advance the background by one half inch. Take a shot of that. Okay. And now, because we're going to be changing our motion again, we're going to take another shot of that. So take another shot. Okay. So, Scott, you should have two frames there of that. Yes. And with that, I'm no longer going to move the background, but I'm going to start inching him up again. Take a shot of that. Holding his head in place, push him up a little bit further, pulling the tail in, take a shot of that. Okay. Gonna move it up again, keeping the head in place, go ahead. Okay. Holding the head down, dragging the tail inward. Take a shot of that. Got it. Holding the head down one more time, going to the maximum. Maximum new shape here. Good. Take a shot of that. Got it. Good. Because this is the maximum height of the U shape, we're going to shoot it twice. Take another shot. Okay, now we're gonna start the reverse motion again and we're gonna introduce the background moving. So 
First thing we're going to do is lift up his head a little bit. Okay, take a shot of that. Okay. Now I'm going to keep that head approximately in the same place and I'm going to push the tail back just a little bit. And I'm going to advance the background by one half inch. Take a shot. Good, keeping the head in place. Gonna move it a little bit further, coming down. And I'm gonna advance the background. Take a shot. Got it. And I'm going to hold the head, pull the tail a little bit further down. Advance the background. Take a shot. Then I'm gonna hold the head down, start to bring him down. Advance the background and take a shot, shot. Okay. Now, because we're getting close to the end frame, I'm going to start bringing that head back down again. Okay, take that frame. Got it. Who did I advance the background? I think I, I forgot to didn't. advance the background. Okay. Let me Can you uh, take that frame. That last one. Delete that. Let me advance the background one half inch. Now take that shot. Okay, got it. Good. And then finally, I'm going to come down to the seat frame or the beginning of this cycle. Put my character right along, right along. And he did advance. So I'm going to advance the background a little bit further. And let's take a shot of that. Got it. Okay, now, Scott, because we started with a hold, we want to end with a hold. So I want you to take 10 frames of this. Ready? On my count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Got them. And, and with that, we now have our completed shoot approximately two seconds long of this inchworm moving across this branch. So Scott, when you're ready, we can do some playback on this. Just give me one second. It's just refreshing the folder. Okay, uh, looks like I'm ready. Let me just uh, spotlight myself. And... Can you do me a favor, Scott? Put this yes. on a loop so that it loops around. I'm actually scrolling, so I'll just have to scroll it back quickly. Sounds good. So let's see. So here's the first, and let me just scroll through it. Excellent. Keep going. Keep that. Keep scrolling. So, guys, I want to open it up to questions. Does anybody have any questions as Scott rolls through this? As you can see, this is basically a cycle. But unfortunately, we don't have the same drawings to repeat. But I am repeating the same motion. I'm repeating the same foreground motion, but I'm advancing the background, which is creating the sense of motion, okay? So let's walk through it again, Scott, if we could walk through it frame by frame after this one. Sure. So we have a hold here. The object is basically passive. It's waiting there. 
And now he says, I'm going to move forward. The way I move forward is I bring my back tail up to my head. Now I start to lift my front legs off and I push myself forward. And then I come down to the ground. I stop moving. I slide my back up to my head. I lift my head and I push with my hind, with my tail, my head forward. And then I rest. That was very exhausting. So I'm resting now. Okay, let's play at speed again. And there you have your lesson in stop motion animation. Okay, are there any questions? Okay, one thing I want you guys to really pay attention to is you'll notice that I, I had specific places where I shot my frame twice. And that is at the extremes of the motion. So in other words, when I reached the top of the U, I didn't just simply move on to the next frame. What I did was I shot it twice. And the reason why is because it's kind of a ease out. By shooting the frame twice, you ease and you pause at the high point and then you start your motion. And it's the same thing at the bottom. When you get down to the bottom, you have to pause there pause and then start the motion back up again so the pause is caused by shooting the same frame twice and that creates a nice sense of ease in and ease out of the motion and the other thing to remember is you've got to always advance your background now it's not uncommon for, uh, for stop motion animation to be in a set, a three-dimensional set. And in the case of being in a three-dimensional set, okay, your set is going to be behind the character. And that is going to be locked down. Now, in, ad in, advanced, in advanced stop motion animation, they actually move the camera very very subtly with each shot. And what that does is that creates a pan. It, it, it appears as if the camera is moving while the character is moving. And that is a very complex move. Not only are you stop motioning the animation, but you're stop motioning the camera. The camera is slowly moving positions. I prefer, at least when starting to do stop motion animation, that the camera is locked off because it's really hard to repeat. So you lock off the camera, set up your two lights, your key light on the left, your fill light on the right, and then you animate with the camera locked off, taking one frame at a time and then taking two frames at the extremes, okay? This is the same thing with, let's say, nodding your head. So if you were to turn your head from left to right, you would animate each frame here, and then you would shoot this frame twice. And then you would animate back one frame, and then you would animate this frame twice, and then come back, okay? That gives the motion the time to ease in and ease out as it changes direction. Okay, and with that, we've got about 10 minutes left. Does anybody want to share? I would. Okay, who's that? Uh, Nathaniel. Okay, Nathaniel, go for it. So, I actually just tried to flip a clip to the animation. Ooh. Excellent. 
That's a nice rolling of the eyes and also a rolling of the mouth. I'm still Ruth. trying to clean it up. It was just a sketch and I'm trying to clean it up. Yeah, but it's really nice. You 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 were able to make that that beak. It looks like it has a beak on it, kind of swing from side to side like this as the eyes rolled, which is really nice. That's very well done. Excellent. Nice little cycle there. Anybody else want to share? Cindy, have you made any progress on your fly cycle? I was going to wait and see if any of the kids had stuff first. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. Well, two, two things I'll share first um, on the topic of the stop motion. I was just going to plug some software for um, iPad. There's, there's a, a, a set of, of apps called iMotion and you can pair your phone with your iPad and you can use your phone as a shutter. So you don't have to touch the iPad camera. <laughs> oh, very nice. Excellent. So in other words, um, it's, so, it's like a, um, it's an electronic version of a cable release. Exactly. Yes. So um, I just did this while you were talking, just stupid little thing on my desktop here. Um, you know, so it does, it does onion skinning for you and you oh. can remove frames and insert frames as needed, you can um, have it do things on a timer for you, or you can manually capture each frame. That's so great. It's a handy little, handy little app if, if anybody's interested. <laughs> That's really cool. And my kids, and you, <laughs> offer, you, you just did that while we were going through this class, correct? Yeah. <laughs> so as you can see, stop motion is often thought of as something that is incredibly time consuming. It is if you're doing a feature film or if you're doing something professional, but if you're doing something just for fun, to create an illusion, a classic one is to have stuffed objects run across your bed. So let's say you, you plant yourself in bed or your brother and sister in bed, and then you say, stay very still, and I'm gonna shoot one frame at a time and move the character around on your bed and up to your face and down to your feet and things like that. That's actually really, really cool, and people just freak out. They can't believe it. And um, the second thing I was, you had asked if I'd work, continued working on any other stuff. Um, well, let me see if I could figure out how that share screen here. Okay, is it sharing? Yes. Okay, here is, I think I showed everybody else this yesterday, but I, I don't know if you'd seen it. This no. is the basic story I came up with for the guy with uh, poop falling on his head. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, man, that is hilarious. I'll Let's see it, it again. Time. That is great. And then I decided that I was going to uh, use this as an excuse to learn um, Adobe Animate real quick. And so all I've gotten done so far is just, I, I rigged all the parts, parented, parented all the parts that needed to be parented. And I just figured out how to make him wobble and blink. So. Good for you. So you've actually parented oh, all those objects. Yeah, that we did blink, it was just very fast. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Now, okay. as, I, as I talked about the last class that we had, you know, blinking is a, is, is a very, very uh, easy and very important way to make characters feel uh, alive. Um, because if a character just sits there and doesn't do anything during a hold, um, <laughs> you're, you're not convinced that he's actually alive. Um, so blinking every now and then is, is, is a very, very typical technique. And, and even as humans, we blink all the time. Over the course of a, of, a, of a minute, we'll blink probably 30 times. So um, you'll be surprised. Uh, okay, I'm going to move on. Tate, Tater, do you have anything to, to share? Uh, sure. Give me a quick sec. To okay. Got any characters designed or anything? Uh, yeah, kind of. I have an animation that I'm working on. Um, ignore all this ugly stuff. There we go. So this is, I showed the work in progress yesterday. But
Uh, that's yeah, good. that's what I got. <laughs> Super good. That is great. Thank You're you. dealing with some motion graphics there with your type. And uh, you're, you're, you're syncing your animation to an audio track, which is just fantastic. Really, yeah, really well you. done. Thank Very you. impressive. I must admit, that sounds fantastic. It's like a little uh, you know, music video. That's fantastic. Really, really nicely done. Excellent, excellent. Uh, let's see, Jay, you have anything? Um, yeah, it's somewhat old. I did like the first or second week, but I guess I can share because I'm pretty sure I've shared everything else. So good. Um, let me turn down my brightness. Oh yeah, you've shared that before. Oh, you've yeah. you've taken it a little bit further, I think. I don't really remember so cool. what I had before, but yeah. Really nice squash and stretch. Excellent with character, with entire character reduced to simple forms, doing exaggerated motion. Really well done, Jay. Nice. Looks really, really good. Love using the way you use the frame. He bounces around the frame. That's really nicely done. Thank you. Excellent. How about uh, Liliana and Heather? Um, I guess I could share this. I've been working on trying to do more realistic art very nice yes i see a, a a mom and daughter i see a turtle i see i'm not sure what's over on the far right side oh i see it's some fingers holding some sort of an object super good well done yeah learn you're doing a lot of good drawing you can't you can't do enough drawing so keep drawing all you can thank you yeah, well I mean, done. I don't have to share just yet. No, okay. Looks sorry, like Heather, Kat would like have... to share. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Hi, Kat. Um, well, I have, it's going to be an elf. You really can't tell yet at all because it's nowhere near finished. But um, he's got mostly the basic drawing. Very cool. Like that. I like the construction lines too. You've got nice construction lines going there. Nice proportions, by the way. Hard to get. Thank you. Proportions are hard. They're really hard to get. And you'll know they're wrong right away. Because when somebody's head is too big and their body's too small or vice versa, you notice it right away. So getting proportion is one of the, one of the most important things in early drawing. Very good. Okay, guys, we're getting, uh, we're a little bit over. Does anybody else want to share? Okay, and if not, uh, I just want to thank you again for joining the uh, Chuck Jones Center for Creativity. Remind you that if you want to make a little donation, uh, we would certainly appreciate it. You can do that at chuckjonescenter.org. Once again, that's chuckjonescenter.org. All right, guys. With that, I'm going to sign off and look forward to seeing you in future classes. I know our animation month is up. We're done. It's now the end of April, so our animation month is, is up, and I hope you've learned a lot. With that, I want to sign off. I hope you had a great month. Uh, we certainly did. It was a lot of fun. We covered a lot of very important concepts of animation. And when combined with your character and drawing work, you guys are going to have a blast. So enjoy. And uh, we'll catch you uh, sometime in the future. I don't know when, but you'll be seeing me again. So get ready. All right. Thanks a lot, you guys. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Bogey. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.